Welcome to a new video in my Latte Panda series. To quickly recap, the F robot has contacted me a few months ago and they were kind enough to send me a Latte Panda single board computer for a review. In my first video I did a review of the hardware and now I am setting it up for Node-RED home automation. I'm creating a playlist for all the Latte Panda videos so you have all the information at the same place if you need it. As usual, links to pages, commands and everything you need is in the video description. I'm going to cover the following in this video. Fixing the resolution issue to increase the screen resolution to Full HD. Set a fixed IP address for the Latte Panda. Install Node-RED and some of the basic nodes. Install Mosquito MQTT Broker. Set up Node-RED to use a self-signed certificate, user access to admin and a dashboard and also a static folder and set up Node-RED and Mosquito to auto start. I'm accessing Latte Panda via TeamViewer from my laptop, hence you see two start menus at the same time. As you have seen in the previous video, the maximum resolution of Windows was around uh, 1024 times 600 or something similar. That was nowhere uh, to the full HD resolution which is re advertised. I was not able to increase the screen resolution. As you can see this, it is fixed now. I have a lot more different video, video modes. The only issue was that the sc screen got rotated, but you can easily fix that in the settings. Just rotate the screen by 90 degrees. To start, I started googling and then finally I found the topic called the default graphics settings. It is mentioned here that the BIOS needs to be updated. The GitHub page which was linked in this article had plenty of information how to get it done. Download the new BIOS image, which was the 2GB version for me. Extract the files to a pen drive, which is formatted to FAT32. Plug in the pen drive uh, to the Latte Panda and turn it on. This will start the BIOS update process and finally you will be shown this screen that you can see uh, in the GitHub page once the process is completed. Just unplug the pen drive and restart Latte Panda. The new resolutions will be available. It is possible that the later new Latte Panda models will be sold with the updated BIOS and these steps need not to be performed. Next I wanted to change the default uh, dynamic IP to a fixed IP. This is not strictly necessary but if you plan to have devices connected to Node-RED it will be easier if the Node-RED has a fixed IP. This can be easily done in the adapter settings and in IP configuration. Just pick the IP from your local subnet. My router is set up to only assign DHCP addresses from the 100 and 200 range, so I picked something below 100. Once the changes was applied, I lost the TeamViewer connection, but I just reconnected again and I checked in ipconfig slash all in the command prompt that my new IP address was assigned. The next step was to install Node-RED. There is a fair amount of information on nodred.org how to install it. This is a straightforward process. You can see this happening in the background. I just followed the steps in the online documentation. This involves first installing the Node.js and the Node.red itself afterwards. So first I'm installing the 64-bit Node.js using the MSI installer. Once the installation is completed, as per the instructions, I am checking the Node.js version in the command prompt. It is higher than the version in the instructions, so we are all okay. Installing Node-RED is done using npm and it is a simple command line instruction. Again, this is all there in the documentation. Once the installation is successful, you just type Node-RED and Node-RED starts. As you can see, I am able to log into the admin page from my laptop or I should say I'm able to launch the admin page because there's no user authentication at the moment. So the admin works. I created a simple flow just to prove that the runtime works as well. Also quickly install dashboard so I was able to create a small UI as well just to make sure that the UI works. Next step is to make Node-RED auto start when Windows starts. There are a few options available here as mentioned on the website. First I tried using the task scheduler as mentioned. It is a rather simple process, but I ended up ditching it and have gone for the second option. See both options and then you can decide which one works for you. But before we start with this step, we need to specify a password for our Latte Panda user. 
I think you should do it regardless if you are using the task scheduler or something else. It's not really a good practice to have a user ID, especially the only admin user in your computer without a password. Of course, you can create a separate user if you want to. You see me adding a password for the Latte Panda user in the Windows settings. Now it's time to set up the task scheduler. I type task scheduler into the Cortana search window and I load the module. I select new task and I provide the task details like the description and the name. And I also select to run whether the user is logged on or not, just to make sure that the Node-RED is started as soon as the Windows boots up, not only after the first user logs in. In the triggers, I select the task to start on Windows Startup. On the actions, I add the Node-RED command, which is in my case is in C, users, Latte, Panda, App Data, Roaming, NPM, and Node-RED.CMD. On the conditions, I set to only start if the network connection is available. In settings, I enable free restarts. And I also uncheck the option to stop the job if it's running for more than three days. When pressing OK, you need to enter the password for the user who will be executing this job. After this, the new task will appear under the task scheduler library. Now you can right click and select run. And that will launch Node-RED. As you can see, I'm able to load the editor now, so this is definitely working. I think using the task scheduler is a good option for a production system where you are not expected to shut down or restart Node-RED many, many times. Especially in the beginning, when I had to restart Node-RED many times, I had some issues. Maybe I should not have started the task scheduler and only start Node-RED from the command line for the time being. So again, if you want to stick with task scheduler, do not run the task now. Just keep launching uh, Node-RED from the command line. And once all the configuration is ready, you can just uh, start the final version of Node-RED from the task scheduler. Next step is to install the Mosquito MQTT broker. Again, this is optional, but if you are planning to have a few connected devices, I think this is essential. First, go to mosquito.org and find the 64-bit installer in the download section. You also need to download the 64-bit version of OpenSSL as well. You need the 64-bit Lite installer. I started by installing OpenSSL first. Just follow the on-screen instructions. I used all the default settings. And next, I installed the MQTT broker. Accept the default settings and just keep clicking next. When I started the mosquito.exe, from the installation folder, I got uh, the following error message. This is not the same error message what I have seen in many different blog posts and YouTube videos. Maybe this is due to a newer version of installer available. The error message suggested that the C++ runtime library is missing from Windows. So I have gone to Microsoft.com and downloaded the C++ 2015 redistributable update 64-bit version. Once downloaded, it was again a simple process of going through the installation wizard. And after this, when I started Mosquito, there was no error message. I have gone back to my Node-RED editor and I added a few nodes to connect to the MQTT broker on the Latte Panda. I have specified the IP address of the Latte Panda. This is a simple MQTT in node which subscribes to all the topic and dumps the results in a debug. Once you compile the code, the MQTT node shows connected, so the MQTT service is running. I've gone back to the TeamViewer screen and stopped Mosquito and entered mosquito.exe install into the command line. This is supposed to install a Windows service that I can use to launch Mosquito on Windows Startup. I have tried many different options, but it just didn't work for me. I was keep getting the same error message over and over. I also found the issue on GitHub on this. So I'm waiting for a resolution uh, for this problem. I will deal with this problem in a different way later. By the way, if you start mosquito.exe-v in the command line, you can see what's happening inside a broker. This is a good way of troubleshooting issues in the beginning. This way, as long as the program is running in the command prompt, the broker is up. Once you close it, the broker shuts down. The next step is to set up the user ID password for the clients to use when connecting to the MQTT broker. 
For this, start the command prompt again, this time as an administrator. Go to the folder where the Mosquito is installed. For me, this is C program files and Mosquito. Type the command mosquito underscore pass wd, short for password, space dash c space pvfile.conf, and finally a username. In my case, it's going to be mquser. When you press enter, the program will ask you to type the password for this mqtd user. You need to enter it twice. Once this is done, the user data is written into the pvfile.conf configuration file. Now we need to edit the mosquito.conf file. If you open it in Notepad, it looks really rubbish. So I downloaded a third-party text editor called the TextPad, which can handle these type of uh, text files, which only have a line break and no carriage return. At least I think this is the reason Notepad cannot load it properly. Just Google TextPad, download the installer, and follow the on-screen instructions. Open mosquito.conf in the editor. Here we are making two changes. First, uncomment the allo underscore anonymous true line and change it to false. Next, as uncomment the password underscore file line and type your password file, which is in my case pvfi.conf. Now go back to my previous command prompt and start the broker with dash c mosquito.conf dash v parameters. As you can see, the log says that the config file is loaded as you can see, the log says that the config file is loaded and now what you can see that Node-RED is not able to connect to MQTT. This is of course okay as we disable the anonymous logins. So I go ahead and add the user and the password to the MQTT configuration in Node-RED. And after this, it's able, it is able to connect just fine. After this, I've also created a simple MQTT node just to make sure I can send messages in. I can also see that the message is being shown in the broker console in the command prompt. So our MQTT broker is working and user control is also set up now. This was the point when I started running issues with task scheduler. Even though I have selected the end task from the task scheduler, Node-RED was somehow still running in the background because when I wanted to start another instance, it was saying that the port is uh, still in use. Of course, I didn't want to create another instance, I just wanted to run, run Node-RED again. This is clearly a sign of another instance still running in the background. At this point, you can disable the task scheduler and then restart the machine and start over. So next, I started installing PM2 that will take care of auto-starting Node-RED when Windows starts. Start the command prompt and type npn install pm2-g. Wait for the process to complete. It will take some time. Next step is to tell PM2 to manage Node-RED. You do this by typing PM2 start and the Node-RED command file, which is in C users latte panda aptata roaming npm node, node underscore modules node dash red and red.js. Now you can see that Node-RED is added to PM2 list and it is online. Type PM2 save to save the settings. Now we have to make changes in the node-red.js file. It is in the C users latte panda node-red folder. I bring this over to Notepad to edit. I create a new www root folder in the node-red folder and I also move a random image uh, file to this folder for testing. Back in Notepad, I look for the line which says HTTP static. Uncomment it and specify the path of your www root folder. You need to replace all the backslashes with normal slashes. Now it is time to restart Node-RED, which is a very simple in PM2. Type PM2 stop red and after that type PM2 start red. After this, I also type PM2 log red to see the Node-RED log. In the log, you can see that the HTTP static is created. From this point, when you reference any files in the www root directory, you just type the file name after the HTTP, the EP address of the machine and colon 8080 slash and the file name. As you can see, I'm displaying the logo.png in the browser, which I have previously copied into that uh, www root folder. This will be useful in the future, so you can integrate floor plans and other static images in your UI. 
Next step is to configure Node-RED to use HTTPS instead of the Instacure HTTP channel. I don't have a properly signed certificate, so I will create a self-signed certificate instead. For this, I need to launch PowerShell as an administrator. It takes some time to load. Paste the following command into PowerShell. You will find this in the video description. This will generate a self-signed certificate, which is valid for 10 years. Now launch Manage Computer Certificates from Cortana and find the new certificates that just got created under Personal slash Certificates. Right-click, uh, select All Tasks and Export. On the second screen of the wizard, select Yes to export a private key. Select the PFX format. On the next screen, select the Password option and specify a password here. As the last step, specify the file name. I picked Brief key for private key. Go back to your simpler command prompt and type the following command. This will convert the PRF format to another format that we can use in Node-RED. You find the command in the video description. You need to enter the password that you just set before. And now you can see that the private key.pem file is generated. Now we also need to export a certificate as a certificate file. Just follow the steps shown on the screen. I picked the file name called cert.cer. Now go to Notepad, which is still editing the settings.js, and uncomment the HTTPS section shown on the screen. Update the file name to the private key and the certificate key file that we have just created in the previous steps. Just like before, replace all the backslashes with normal slashes. Also find this line which says VARFS on the top of uh, the settings.js and uncomment it. Save your changes and restart Node-RED by issuing PM2 stop red and PM2 start red. Now if I look at the log, it shows that the server is running an HTTPS now. If I try to reload Node-RED on my previous URL, it does not respond anymore. From this point, now we need to use the HTTPS prefix. Because the certificate is a self-signed certificate, you will get a warning from Chrome. Just click Advanced and proceed. With this done, we are almost done with Node-RED, but we have to make sure random people cannot access our Node-RED system. It is possible to add user authentication both for the editor and the dashboard as well. For this, we need to install a new component. Type the following in the command prompt, npm install dash g node-red-admin and wait for the installation to complete. Now type node-red-admin space hash pw. Enter the password for the Node-RED user. This password will be used along with the user ID to access the editor and the dashboard as well. When you press enter, you will get a hash of for your password. You copy this from the command prompt into your Windows clipboard. In TextPad, find the admin auth section. You can use F5 to search in TextPad. Uncomment the section and change as you see on the screen. Change the username if you want something different and paste the hash generated earlier. This example will create an admin user with full access to anything. It is possible to create other users which have read-only access only. A bit further down, do the same with the HTTP node auth section. I use the same user and the password hash here. Save your changes. Restart Node-RED and you will notice that you will be asked to provide a user ID and a password when you re reload the editor. With Node-RED fully configured, the only thing which is left to be done is to set up PM2 so it starts Node-RED every time the system starts. For this, we need to set up a system variable first. Note your PM2 folder, which is the C users Latte Panda PM2 for me. In the environment variables, add a new system variable, which is called pm2 underscore home, and the value is the path of the pm2 folder. Next, in a command prompt, which is running as an administrator, issue pm2 space kill and pm2 start resurrect after each other. Next, type npm space install space uh, dash g space pm2 dash windows dash service. This will install the PM2 component that will generate the Windows service entry. Now generate the service entry itself by typing pm2-service-install-n-pm2. 
answer the on-screen questions as you can see on my screen. If you start the Windows service after this, you should see a PM2 entry. As you can see, the service has been created and it is running. Checking PM2 shows that the Node-RED is, is running and the log entries are recorded. Since I could not get the Windows service for the MQTT broker running, I resorted to a very simple method, which is setting up Node-RED to launch MQTT. I created an inject node which fires on startup and launches MQTT via an exec node. Here you can see an error under the exec node, but that is only because I triggered the inject twice. Since the instance of the broker was already running, the second instance failed. But regardless, MQTT broker is running now. As you can see, my MQTT nodes are connected. This simple flow will make sure that your MQTT broker is launched with Node-RED. I will monitor the GitHub issue and if there is a final solution for the Windows service, I will definitely switch to that and post an update on YouTube. So this is where I am right now. Latte Panda is running, Node-RED is starting automatically, MQTT is starting automatically. So I think everything is done what I wanted to do as like the first setup of, of a Node-RED system which should be suitable for home automation. Of course, I'm pretty sure that there will be some new stuff that I want to add in the future. And if I do that, I will just create a new update or follow-up video and I will put it into this Latte Panda playlist that I've created for this video and also for the previous video. The other small thing which I've added uh, is basically these two uh, small flows, which allows me to remotely restart or shut down the computer. I still don't know the reason for that, but for some reason I noticed that if the Latte Panda is running for a long time, even though I know that the Latte Panda is definitely running because Node-RED is running, I'm able to load the, the UI, it, I'm not able to connect to the TeamViewer service. So um, I don't really have any way to shut the, the computer down you know, gracefully other than plugging the power. So I've created this really simple flow, which if I click here, these are just simple inject nodes which execute an exec and the command is simple shut down slash ash to shut down the computer or shut down slash r to restart the computer thank you for watching this episode on setting up node on the latte panda and hopefully see you in the next video